You know, uh, something I learned about fear, it's interesting. The body's physiological response to fear is similar to the physiological response to falling in love. So this is true. If you are with someone and you experience uh, something frightening together, like on a date, you're more likely, this is truth, look it up, to fall in love with that person. So if any of you are here on dates tonight on the way home, swerve the car, do something crazy, get that heart. No, it, it's true. Hey, take my advice. Our next speaker is in the business of social change. She's the director of digital marketing and sales at Symbology Clothing, which is an ethical clothing company that partners with artisans worldwide to elevate traditional craft into high fashion designs. Put your hands together for Taylor Reedy. As a member of the startup community, I look around me and I see people building some pretty boring shit. And it's not just that the solutions being developed are boring, it's really that the problems being solved are kind of dull. I mean, for example, I don't think 20-somethings have really had a problem hooking up with relative strangers since the advent of tequila. But we talk about Tinder like it's some sort of revolution. So here's my ask to you all tonight. If you are building the Facebook of whatever, or the Uber of who gives a damn, just stop. Now, if you've known me for about five minutes, you've heard me share my passion for social innovation, potentially my rage against Tom Shoes. <laughs> and so it's no surprise tonight I'm talking about how we can make the world a better place. But I'm not here to show you swollen bellies and sad faces. Those are degrading images, but I am here to challenge you all tonight. Uh, I'm here to challenge you because those swollen bellies do not convince people to make change. If it did, it would have worked already. <laughs> Instead, I'm here to prey on your ego a little bit. Because if you're gonna call yourself an innovator or entrepreneur, then honestly, we have to level up our game. We have to start tackling the global and humanitarian crisis we face as a species. But not because it's the right thing to do, but because honestly, it can be an incredibly profitable thing to do. <laughs> when we talk about these issues like climate change, poverty, energy, it can feel incredibly overwhelming. But don't let complexity confuse you. These skills require many of the same, or these challenges require the same skills entrepreneurs are known for. We merely have to change our frame of mind and think of them not as intractable polemics, but rather as market opportunities. So climate change, it's already happening, it's here. But rather than spell out a doomsday scenario, what if we invested in the very technologies we needed to adapt to our changing planet? What if communities could be better alerted and more prepared for extreme weather instances? Totally possible with the use of big data and near, near universal access to global mobile devices. We can alert communities, we can better predict these instances. And the UN Global Compact predicts that the deployment of these sorts of technologies could actually provide a return on investment for communities of 30 to 1, through reduction of property loss. And that's really before we even start talking about how many lives that could save. And with poverty, work is fundamentally changing, yet we continue to try and alleviate poverty in the developing world using old models of aid that dump free goods and undercut local economies. What if we looked at these communities as assets instead of liabilities? With a good Slack channel and some web applications, you can turn any internet cafe that peppers the developing world into a remote workstation. People with limited training can log on and do micro jobs or simple tasks like data management. <laughs> and actually earn the sort of wages that can transition whole families out of poverty. And this is going on in all sorts of uh, sectors. Energy, we can't talk about saving the world without talking about energy, right? And I am so proud to say that Texas is actually a leader in renewable energy. <laughs> Woo! But what if we took it one step further? What if we decentralized all energy production? What would happen is all of a sudden whole markets would become available, markets that couldn't afford the traditionally very capital intensive and expensive power grids. But you can put a solar panel on a hut and turn this guy into a customer. So with all this opportunity around, I wonder to myself, why the hell is anyone still building a CRM system? But it's not just me that looks at the world this way. Many of the most exciting entrepreneurs are looking to global challenges and social issues as the next frontier of innovation. When Elon Musk confronted the 
corruption, inefficiencies, and pollution of the petroleum-based economy. He didn't picket ExxonMobil. He built Tesla, and in the process, ended up making another billion dollars. <laughs> and so, what excites me most about this is that the reality is those who build the world of tomorrow have always been generously rewarded, and that's no different in our new digital revolution. But now we have the capacity to not only disrupt the power systems that turn on our lights, but we can disrupt the power systems that govern our very lives. We have, yeah, we have the ability to create a more just, prosperous, and open future for everyone, but it's gonna take all hands on deck. So again, if you call yourself an innovator, I say to you, just stop building boring shit.